Have you ever wondered how a 3D printer works? A 3D printer is a machine that can create three-dimensional objects or models that are created using a 3D modeler. Essentially, the mathematics behind a 3D model is the idea of coordinate space. In simple words, a 3D model is a bunch of coordinates in space that describe the entire 3D object. When these coordinates are fed in into a 3D printer, the 3D printer's nozzle will follow all the coordinates systematically until it completed the whole project. In this video, I will discuss the different coordinate systems in two-dimensional and three-dimensional spaces. To guide you, consider the following questions. How to plot or locate a point in 2D or 3D using Cartesian, polar, cylindrical, or spherical coordinates? How to convert the coordinates of a point to another form? Example, from Cartesian to cylindrical, and so on. How to convert an equation from a given coordinate system to another? The Cartesian coordinate system is also known as the rectangular coordinate system because it uses rectangles to locate a point in 2D or 3D. In this video, we will call the two-dimensional space as 2D space or a plane and the three-dimensional space as a 3D space or simply a space. For example, if we want to locate or plot a point in 2D, say the point negative 1, 4, we locate the coordinate negative 1 along the negative x-axis and 4 along the positive y-axis. Then draw vertical and horizontal lines, respectively, that pass through these coordinates. The intersection of these lines is the location of the point. Note that these lines determine a rectangle. Hence, the name rectangular coordinates follow. Please note that in the point negative 1, 4, we call negative 1 as the x-coordinate and 4 as the y-coordinate of the point. Also note that the order of the coordinates matters. This is a reason we call negative 1, 4 as an ordered pair. Moreover, conventionally, we represent the y-axis using a vertical line and the x-axis by a horizontal line where the negative y-axis is below the x-axis and the negative x-axis is on the left of the y-axis. However, technically, you may change the orientation of the axis. However, this orientation is the most usual in literature and society. For example, in this two-dimensional graph, the coordinates in the horizontal axis increase from left to right. In the vertical axis, um, increase from bottom to top. Now, let's talk about the Cartesian coordinate system in 3D space. Similarly, you may call this system a rectangular coordinate system in 3D. You've seen in the previous example that we need two coordinates in plotting a point in 2D. Imagine a point on the xy plane that is now oriented horizontally. If we leave that point, we can say that point is now in 3D space. Record the height or depth of that point. We make that as the third coordinate of the given point. This gives us the coordinates or location of a point in space. Observe that a point in Cartesian coordinates in 3D is represented by an ordered triple. Suppose we have a point 3, negative 2, 1 in Cartesian coordinates. We call the first, second, and third coordinates as the x, y, and z coordinate, respectively. 
we identify these coordinates on the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. At this point, we need to consider the orientation of the x, y, and z-axis. As a usual practice, labels of the axis indicate the positive sides. Let's identify the coordinates of the given point properly. Again, 3 is the x-coordinate, negative 2 is the y-coordinate, and 1 is the z-coordinate. First, look at the point 3, negative 2 in the xy-plane, as we've done before. So this is that point. And then, lift that point one unit above the xy-plane, as indicated by the z-coordinate 1. And now this is the visualization of the point 3, negative 2, 1 in 3D space. On the other hand, the point with coordinates negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 is 3 units below the xy plane. The x and y axis form a mathematical representation or a mathematical visualization of a 2D space or a plane. Similarly, the x, y, and z axis form the visualization of a 3D space. How about a four-dimensional space? All you have to do is to add a fourth axis. However, in reality, this is quite hard to conceive. You may want to see the TED-Ed video that will challenge your perception of dimensions. You may click the link above. Imagine you're a point in a one-dimensional Cartesian world. So you can only move on a line. The coordinate zero, being your point of reference, can tell you your location either to the positive or negative side. You just measure your directed distance from zero. Now, if you're a two-dimensional point in a 2D Cartesian world, how can you tell your location? What are your references? The two coordinate axes, yes. Specifically, you can determine your location on a plane by measuring your directed distances from the X and Y axis. And now, what if you're a three-dimensional point? What will be your references? The three coordinate planes. Similarly, your directed distances from these planes will tell you your location in 3D space. You see that knowing the right references will help you plot a point in the Cartesian coordinate system in 2D and 3D. That is exactly what you need to plot a point in the polar, cylindrical, and spherical coordinate systems. Using polar coordinates is another way of locating a point on a plane. To be successful in understanding the polar coordinate system, you should determine first the references. Recall that in Cartesian coordinates, the location of a point on a plane is determined by its directed distances from the x and y axis. Unlike Cartesian coordinates, the polar coordinate system uses a fixed point and a fixed line as references. The fixed point is a reference for a linear distance of a point. On the other hand, the fixed line is a reference for the angular distance of the given point. For example, the point 2 pi over 3 in polar coordinates means that the point is 2 units from the fixed point and pi over 3 radians in a counterclockwise direction from the fixed line. Try to compare when you plot the same point using Cartesian coordinates. What if we have the point negative 2 pi over 3 in polar coordinates? What rule must we apply? This point is exactly the opposite of the point 2 pi over 3. 
So given a polar point with a negative value of r, that point is located in the opposite direction of the line determined by theta. Two different pairs of polar coordinates may identify a single point on a polar plane. For example, 2, 4 pi over 3, and the point negative 2, pi over 3, determine the same point. Why do you think so? Can you give another example? You will realize that it is an essential skill to convert one coordinate form to another to simplify the evaluation of some integrals. Let's try to convert the point negative 1, 1 in Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. Note that r is the distance of the point from the origin. Using distance formula, r is equal to the square root of the sum of squares of the x and y coordinates. That is, r is equal to square root of 2. On the other hand, theta could be the smallest angle measured from the positive x-axis. Hence, we could take 3 pi over 4 for theta. For simplicity, always consider the smallest positive angle for theta. Note that in using the arctangent function, we need to add pi radians if the point landed on quadrant 2 or on quadrant 3. Thus, in this example, the actual value of theta using the arctangent function is equal to arctangent of negative 1 plus pi, which is 3 pi over 4. We have the following formulas in converting points in Cartesian to polar coordinates and vice versa. Again, notice that in using the arctangent function, Pi must be added to get the actual value of theta if the point lands on quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. Let's try converting the Cartesian form of the equation of a circle centered at the origin and with radius equal to a units. From the formula above, you can immediately obtain that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Hence, the polar form of the circle is r squared equals a squared. Doesn't it look simpler having a single variable r? After learning the Cartesian and polar coordinate systems, combining them could give us another kind of system in 3D space. Is it really necessary to learn coordinate systems in 3D space other than the Cartesian coordinates? Well, the answer is yes when we talk about the evaluation of multiple integrals. In general, the Cartesian coordinate system is enough to deal with the evaluation of integrals. However, not all integrals can be easily evaluated using Cartesian coordinates. This is when cylindrical and spherical coordinates become useful. Remember that knowing the right references of measurement will help you plot a point in the Cartesian coordinate system in 2D and 3D, and also in polar coordinate system. And this is also what we need to plot a point in cylindrical and spherical coordinate systems. In simple words, you might think of the cylindrical coordinates as combinations of polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates. Specifically, imagine the 3D space where the horizontal coordinate plane is the polar plane and the vertical coordinate axis is the Z axis. So, to plot a point in cylindrical coordinates, first, we must identify the polar point given by R and theta on the horizontal axis on the horizontal plane that we chose. Then, give it a height or a depth depending on the value of z. Consider the point 3, pi over 4, 
2 and 3, pi over 4, negative 2 in cylindrical coordinates. First, we plot the polar point 3, pi over 4 on the xy plane or the polar plane. Then lift the point 2 units above the xy plane for z equals positive 2 and put the point 2 units below directly the xy plane for z equals negative 2. Observe that these conversion formulas are exactly the same with the formulas that we use when we convert Cartesian and polar coordinates. Well, the main reason is that the first two coordinates, r and theta, are exactly polar coordinates. Note that the spherical coordinate system is another coordinate system in 3D space. How do we plot a point using spherical coordinates given by rho, theta, and phi? First, we identify theta on the xy plane. Then using the line being defined by theta, we construct a right triangle by adding the sides determined by rho and phi as shown in the figure. Take note that rho is the distance of the point from the origin and always greater than or equal to zero. Remember that knowing the references of measurement, again, will help you understand a given coordinate system. In spherical coordinates, rho is the distance of the point from the origin. Theta is the smallest positive angle measured from the positive x-axis. And phi is the smallest positive angle measured from the positive z-axis. Let's try to plot the point 3, pi over 4, pi over 4 in spherical coordinates. Observe that the point is 3 units from the origin. And we measure pi over 4 radians from the positive x-axis and pi over 4 radians from the positive z-axis. Consequently, we have the following conversion formula. Similar to cylindrical coordinates, the following conversion formulas can be computed using right triangles. Well, it is a nice exercise for your skills in tri trigonometry, and you should try it. Can you see some similarities between these formulas with that of the polar coordinates? A nice illustration on conversions is to show how simple an equation of a sphere will be in spherical coordinates. Consider the equation of a sphere centered at the origin and with radius a units in Cartesian coordinates. Given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared. Since rho is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared, then rho squared is equal to a squared. And since, since rho is always non-negative, the simple we simply write the equation to rho equals a. Always remember that one of the main motivations in studying different coordinate systems, especially Cartesian, polar, cylindrical, and spherical coordinate systems is to simplify evaluation of multiple integrals. Thank you. If you want to learn more about topics on Math 28, check out these videos. And don't forget to answer the exercises found in the description below. Have a good day! Bye!